Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Mellow Mama and today I'll be discussing parenthood and identity. Asking the wonderful, insightful question that Eckhart Tolle proposes to us in his book, A New Earth. Ba -ba -da -da. Are you able to fulfill the function of being a parent and fulfill it well without identifying with that function? That is, without it becoming a role. My channel what's up i'm caitlin i talk all things conscious living and conscious respectful parenting so this particular subject just i love it i love discussing who you are and what your true life purpose really is and how that relates to being a better mom or dad and having a better relationship with your children in general i have a 16 month old son named donovan and we have been able to build such a wonderful strong beautiful true relationship and I think a big big contributor to that is the fact that I identified my worth and the value of my needs not just my physical needs like uh, caring for myself through exercise and healthy nutrition but my my mental needs making myself a priority in that regard also my needs for creativity to create this channel is a big part of what keeps me um, feeling fulfilled and motivated and inspired as a parent and that allows me to give Donovan some inspiration himself and I'm going to touch on that more but my point is that I want everyone to feel that same sort of fulfillment, that same sort of understanding of who they are and what they want even before and after becoming parents. I'm going to give you some good tips, I'm going to ask you some questions that will maybe get you thinking which is always the goal of my videos and of course focus on this resource right here, this Eckhart Tolle book, A New Earth. There are numerous reasons why I believe this book to be one of the most important books that anyone can read but especially for someone that's hoping or trying to become a parent one day or that already is a parent. I think this would really, really benefit you. So if you're not going to read it yourself, I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> you have no choice if you keep watching. So yeah, I'm going to focus on this book and also just my own resources and advice based on personal experience. Let's go. So first of all, let's ask the question, who are you? Do you know your life's purpose? And I know that's a very big question. A lot of people really really don't know the answer and it's obvious why. The way that our society is structured now and the way that relationships are even structured based on control and manipulation, guilt, you know, the behaviorism, it, it doesn't allow us to connect to our true intrinsic self. In fact, it strips us of that ability and it makes us sort of unaware that we aren't living up to who we really are. I think every person that I've talked to that has had a sort of awakening has said to me that they didn't even realize what it was that was missing or how to get onto that path where they felt connected and fulfilled because so many extrinsic motivators existed in their life and I think that's relevant for almost everybody. Who we are today is largely defined by the people that influenced our life. It doesn't have to necessarily be your parents, which those are obviously the biggest influencers for most people, which is why I have a whole channel on parenting. Hello. In general, I think that the labels that have been placed on us from childhood, I think that the experiences that we've had with behaviorism, uh, reward and punishment, doing things to please other people, and, and fitting into this general mold that society expects from us is what's stopping us from understanding who we are. And that's ultimately stopping us from being happy people. So to start answering those big questions, I want you to ask yourself more questions. What are your strengths in character? Are you generous? Are you just a really kind person? Are you creative? Are you spontaneous? Are you adventurous? Patient? Wonderful listener? The list could go on and on, but I want you to identify those wonderful qualities about yourself first and foremost. What are your strengths? Next, I want you to assess your skill set. What skills do you have? What can you offer the world around you? And what do you enjoy offering the world around you? For me personally, I love making video and photo content. That's why I'm a photographer. That's why I make YouTube videos. I love that I have that skill set and I also match it up with my strengths and character. And combining the two inevitably leads to my third question, what are you proud of? 
what are some accomplishments that you are like, yes, I want to duplicate that. I want to do that again, but better. I want to grow in that. I, I loved what I created there, or I love what I did there. Understanding your strengths and character, your skills, and your previous accomplishments that you have to be proud of will allow you to get a good scope on who you are. What defines you? What brings you joy? What brings you fulfillment? And from there, you simply have to do more of those things. Apply your strengths and character to your skill set to create something that you are proud of and that you are so happy to give the world around you and repeat. The more and more that you repeat that cycle, the more you're growing. Now, a question that you're asking, I'm sure, is okay, but how do I do that as a mom or a dad? I'm a mom or a dad. I have so little time to do the things that I want to do. And I understand that. I'm a mom, so I want to tell you exactly how to do what you want to do. Prioritize yourself. It is not me first, it is me too. I love that quote, I have no idea where I read it at this point, but I love it and I live by it. Taking care of you and your needs is going to allow you to be more patient, more understanding, more empathetic, more joyful, fulfilled, and more peaceful as a parent. The great quote, taking care of yourself is taking care of your kids really speaks to me because modeling is everything as a parent. If you've got a newborn or a younger baby, you might not see it just yet, but your children are watching your every move. They're listening to everything that you say and they're repeating it. Whether that's how you talk to yourself, the way that you look at yourself, the way you talk to others, the way you treat others, the way that you treat your body with food or with lack of exercise or with lots of exercise, the way you pursue your dreams or don't pursue your dreams. Children will probably repeat that or they're going to need to look for external sources of inspiration if you're not giving that to them. If you're not showing them how to live an incredible life, they're going to look elsewhere and they're going to be closer and they're going to find mentorship and people that aren't their parents, that aren't you. And I don't think anybody really wants that. Of course, it's inevitable that our children are going to be inspired by people that aren't us, but if we are their number one source for everything, why don't we want to be their number one source for inspiration, for living an incredible lifestyle, for really being ourselves in children's books or movies or cartoons or birthday cards. That same regard, I think a funny detail to consider is that we constantly tell children, constantly, whether it's in our words or the cards that we write to them or the songs that we sing or the shows that people watch, be yourself. That is constantly expressed over and over again to children. And it's ironic because all the while, we, we take that from them, especially when we are not being ourselves, when we are not following our true intrinsic motivation and, and taking care of those needs to, to create, to do, to become whatever it is that we want to become and do, create. So prioritize yourself and get rid of that guilt that you're doing something wrong, that you're not investing enough time or you're not being present enough if you take an hour to work out or take out two hours to work on something that really means something to you and, and is going to contribute to your growth as a human being. Get rid of that guilt. It's false. You're doing a wonderful thing for your children by caring for yourself. Once again, just because you're caring for yourself does not mean that you're neglecting your children. It's me too, not me first. Now, of course, the question again, when, Caitlin, I, I get it, I need to prioritize myself, but when can I do that? I don't have time. Make the time. You are important enough to cut out an hour of your day. I guarantee that a lot of you watching watch an hour of television. I know This Is Us just came back on. I'm sure some of you are spending your time doing that instead of meditation, exercise, uh, self-development, prayer, creating your own YouTube content. I don't know what you're into. There are far too many successful women and men that have a billion children. Are they well cared for? I don't know. That's a different story. Is it difficult when you are a respectful, conscious, present parent to take time away from your kids because you know the value of your time and engagement? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I have a very difficult time with what exactly, like the exact things that I'm telling you, I have a very difficult time with. Right now I'm filming and I had to allow my mom to help me. 
so I could film this video. Painful. Painful stuff. Why? I don't know. Because even as much as I know the value of this for me, for you, uh, this, this for my son, it's still difficult because of what society tells us as women, that we are not doing enough, that we are not enough, and I'm here to tell you that that is not true. That is not the case. So, make the time. Stop making the excuse. Start keeping track of your time. Start, actually, I have this, this very thing that I've got my notes on is my planner. I want you guys to all invest in an actual planner, not your phone not a, an iPad or something, a physical planner where every single night, if you're like me, you don't necessarily have to do this the night before, but trust me, it helps. You write down exactly what you want to get done the next day. Make it reasonable. Watch my productivity video if you'd like to. Make a list. Have a structure for your days. Of course you're not going to have time to prioritize yourself and meet your own needs and do what you want to do if, if your day's all willy-nilly. Baby is going to dictate your life or your children are going to dictate your life if you let them and you don't have any routine. Structure and routine are everything. There's this weird negative connotation around discipline and, and structure, but it's the most freeing thing. When you use your time wisely and you manage your time and sculpt your days, you get things done. You feel productive. You feel like, ah, at least that's how I feel, and I want you guys to feel the same way. So write down your plans the night before. Don't be unreasonable because that's going to be discouraging. If you put 12 things on your to-do list, um, of course it's going to seem like you're not being productive in the end and you're going to feel distraught and stressed and it's not going to lead you to being a great mom or a great dad or a great anything. You're just going to feel crappy. So I want you to be realistic. Make a big three. That's what I normally do. What are my three big tasks that if I can cross those off at the end of my day tomorrow, I will be so satisfied with how I utilize my time. That's the other thing. Look at it like you're utilizing the time, not like you're, the time is running out. Think like, oh, and I can use that hour or I got that 15 minute window um, for just some stillness and meditation or I've got that five minute window before my son or daughter wakes up or uh, right when they're, I don't know, going down for a nap, like right when they've fallen asleep, I can take five minutes to just be present and reflect on who I am and how grateful I am for myself and all of the gifts that I've been given. Those are just examples, but really carve out that time. Sculpt your day. That way you can really be proud of the way that you use the days that you're given. It's a blessing to be here. It is a gift to be alive. I want you to know that and to feel that in your daily life. That being said, some days are unpredictable especially as a parent. They're very unpredictable. Sometimes my son naps for uh, two hours. Sometimes he naps for 45 minutes. Those 45 minute days are rough, especially if I have planned out this beautiful, right, sculpture day. If I keep saying sculpture days, it's rough and, and you can get so discouraged and like, gosh, like I did my makeup. I, I planned out all of my notes. I was ready to film. I got almost to the end and I just couldn't finish it. I know, it's horrible, it's hard. And on days like that, you've gotta go for the 10 to 20 minute rule, like I say. If you do 10 or 20 minutes of work on you, whether it's your mental health by meditating or exercising or going for a walk without a phone or anything like that, then you're in the clear. You did something good for yourself to keep you inspired, to keep you rolling. Momentum is everything. Activity is everything when you're trying to get back to who you are and start fulfilling the goals that you have and, and fulfilling that need for inner peace. That you are fulfilling your purpose. You are getting there. So even if you really are limited on time, start looking out for those little windows where you can build momentum. And even when it's hard and you're reluctant and you're just like, what am I going to get out of 10 minutes? I guarantee you, after 10 minutes, you're going to feel completely different in your mindset. And you might still be saying, I just don't have time, which once again, don't make that excuse. If you're still wondering how to make the time to prioritize yourself, here are some good ways. Ask for help. I know as parents, it becomes difficult, especially for women, again, to just simply say, 
can you help me out for an hour? Can you help me out for a couple of hours? I really want to work on this or I really want to exercise. Just really lean on the people that love you and that want to help you. Along with the personal growth that comes from working on your mental health, your creative health, I suppose, your um, physical health, if you're exercising or something, comes the very simple need to just have a small break from time to time. Everybody needs to be alone here and there. Everybody needs some space here and there. And I think as a new parent especially, that becomes very difficult because your child literally does need you most of the time. They, they really de do need your presence and that's actually a very important part of their life. However, 45 minutes, one hour, an hour and a half, two hours, I mean, this is time that is really going to just make you a better parent. So ask for help and don't be ashamed. People want to spend time with your baby, I guarantee it, because babies are incredible and, and beautiful and they smell amazing. So I don't think that you're really necessarily inconveniencing anyone, but if that really affects you, do something nice for them. And if you're someone that has a committed spouse, they should be more than happy <laughs> help you on your path to fulfillment and to your goals and, and to what you're creating or doing. So don't be afraid to just ask them for a hand from time to time. It's okay. If you're somebody like me that really didn't have any help, I lived in Los Angeles and I had Donovan's dad, but he was kind of always out of the house and my entire family lives here in Ohio. Um, take advantage of nap times and bedtime. All the times that I filmed, sometimes Donovan is awake if you've watched my videos for the first year of his life. Um, actually, a lot of the time he's awake and sort of independently playing, which was just lucky and it looks easy, but it wasn't. Um, but m a lot of the other times he was napping or I filmed or edited right after he fell asleep for the evening. And I would recommend doing the exact same thing. You can get into a much easier workflow when you don't have the stress of your baby either waking up or needing you or, um, I don't know, pooping everywhere in my case because we did elimination communication. And wow, some days I was like right in the middle of a wonderful thought and a YouTube video and pee just right there. So nap times, bedtime, very, very beneficial. In regard to that, if you're somebody like me that wants to present something um, physical like this, like on a camera, I always try to make sure that I am ready to film as soon as Donovan starts napping. So I work out before he's awake and get ready, and then once he's awake, we're just sort of playing, having meal time, and as soon as he's down, I've already got my makeup done and I'm dressed and feeling really good and confident for whatever task it is that I need to do. So I recommend being ready for your day um, before your child naps. That way you don't spend a lot of their nap time getting ready to do whatever you're gonna do. Take advantage of childcare if you have that privilege. For example, for me, when I exercise and go to the gym, they have a childcare option that I pay for. Do I trust that there is respectful conduct between the caregivers and the children? Not necessarily, and that's a very difficult thing that I deal with that I will discuss in a video coming soon. Um, but for an hour of my day, for me to just be in the zone physically and really care for myself, make myself sweat and push myself to new heights during my workout, that's incredibly beneficial. And it, it really is a great way for me to release any sort of tension or stress that I'm holding in my body and that could affect the way that I interact with my son. So take advantage if you have something like that uh, available to you really take advantage of it and like I said I'll address how to deal with um, caregivers that aren't familiar with rye in a later video however my same tip about going slow to go fast you know doing baby steps 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes of self-development each day is going to help you as a working parent that's exhausted after a long day of work and not seeing their baby and all that guilt that you're feeling, just at least make it a priority to say, okay, after my baby is down to sleep and I've done everything that I need to do as a wife or a partner or whatever, take 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes at least for yourself. And if that, that might even mean um, in the early, early morning, I know a lot of parents that wake up at like 5 a.m. to do their workout or something and people will go oh my gosh like how is that possible 
if you want something in life, you can have it. You, you have to put in the work, though. It's not an unfair enough place yet, the world, to just give people things that they don't deserve. So that is the, the raw truth of it. You know, you do sometimes have to make some serious sacrifices. You do have to be disciplined. But I guarantee that those people are not feeling like, oh, why do I do this? They probably feel really inspired, really motivated. They feel really great starting their day at 5 a.m. That's their time. Change your perspective. So ultimately, whether you're a working parent or not, I guess I'm moving away from that now, when it comes to saying you don't have enough time or trying to navigate how to make time as a parent for yourself, see every window as an opportunity to care for yourself. This is a chance, like, oh yes, I get to wake up early and have my time. That's your time to have a warm cup of tea and just dive into a book. Doesn't it just sound good to sit in stillness and meditate? Just to not really worry about your thoughts, just to let them be? things sound amazing. They don't sound like a difficult task. You know, working on my YouTube channel is amazing. It's a gift to me. I love sharing good information. I love editing the videos and I love in general just talking with the community that I've built now and and working on new ideas and reading about new ideas and and thinking about how I'm going to share them. That's not that's not taking a toll on me by any means. It's, it's a gift that I give myself, and I'm so happy that I get to work on it whenever I do. So, change your perspective. If you are in the mind frame now that like, ugh, well, I don't even know what I want, and it doesn't matter, I don't have time anyway, you're just going to feel worse and worse as time goes on, because life and parenting does not get any easier, especially the more and more miserable you feel. And that leads me to my final point that I want to make with the help of Mr. Tolley here father who identifies with the parental role may also try to become more complete through their children. The ego's need to manipulate others into filling the sense of lack it continuously feels is then directed toward them. If the mostly unconscious assumptions and motivations behind the parents' compulsion to manipulate their children were made conscious and voiced, they would probably include some or all of the following. I want you to achieve what I never achieved. I want you to be somebody in the eyes of the world so that I too can be somebody through you. Don't disappoint me. I sacrifice so much for you. My disapproval of you is intended to make you feel so guilty and uncomfortable that you finally conform to my wishes. And it goes without saying that I know what's best for you. I love you and I will continue to love you if you do what I know is right for you. I want you to make a decision right now if that's the parent that you want to be or if you want to be a parent that's in control of your life and your destiny, your goals, your dreams, and their ability to come to fruition. Being, being a parent has been the greatest gift in my life. I love being a mom, and I embraced motherhood from the very beginning with such tenderness and appreciation. However, I never regarded it as my purpose, and I highly recommend that none of you do that either. I want you to be fulfilled in other ways so that you can be wonderful parents, so that you can show your children what you're made of, show your children what you're capable of creating, of doing, of being. That way they can do the same. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts, please please leave them in the comment section below. Keep it positive. I don't know why you wouldn't. If you're into this video and this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to see more about my life and what Donovan and I do on a daily basis, follow me on Instagram at the Mellow Mama. Hope you guys have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.